Hi everybody, this is Malcolm Groves. What I want to show you today is just a little short um, tip about debugging your initialization and finalization sections. Now this came about based on a discussion on the Australian Delphi user group mailing list. Uh, there was an email discussion about initialization sections and finalization sections. And during that conversation I mentioned uh, this technique that I'm going to show you and I had uh, a couple of emails from people um, saying that they'd been using Delphi for quite a while and not known about this technique. Um, I can't remember where I learned about it but given that um, I thought it might be worth doing up a, a short video just to show how to do it. Um, maybe if other people don't know about it this might be helpful to them. So what I'm not going to do is talk about what an initialization and a finalization section is. Um, I'm assuming, perhaps wrongly, but I'm assuming uh, that if you need to debug an initialization section, then you probably know what it is. So I'm not going to waste any time talking about that. What I am going to do is uh, run through a quick little example. I've got a DUnit project here. Um, DUnit as a framework uses initialization sections uh, quite a bit uh, to register tests and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to use that as an example. Now, you could do a couple of things. Uh, if you wanted to debug your initialization and finalization sections, uh, obviously you could open up all of your units that have those sections, stick breakpoints in all of them, uh, and hit F9 and debug them. Uh, that'll work perfectly fine. Um, one problem may be if you've got a reasonably large project uh, and one that maybe you're not familiar with all of the source code in it, either it's come from other developers on your team or uh, third-party components, um, source code from previous developers that, that aren't there anymore. There's a bunch of reasons why you may not be familiar with all of the initialization sections in your project. Um, another reason is it's just painful to go through in a large project and put breakpoints in all of those um, and be confident that you haven't missed a few. So this technique isn't going to require you to do that. What we're going to do, if you bring up your project source code by right-clicking on the project in the project manager and going view source, um, what we're going to do, I'll just do a quick compile, so we get our blue dots. Now hopefully you know that the blue dots represent uh, lines of code in your source code that have had um, code emitted into the binary by the compiler um, or code generated for them. If we stick a breakpoint on this first line in our project application.initialize and hit F9 by the time the breakpoint actually fires all of our initialization sections have already run um, this may be not the most accurate analogy, but the way you can think about it, I guess, is that your um, initialization sections are actually stacked up behind this begin. And so by the time we get to this line, all of that code has already run, so it's too late at that point to debug it. Um, what's interesting and what perhaps you haven't noted, I, I, haven't no I didn't notice for a long time, is that in addition to all of this source code, there's also blue dots for the actual begin uh, and in fact for the end, at the end of the project file. Um, so what we're going to do is actually stick breakpoints on those two points. Uh, and I'm going to hit F9 to debug my project. Uh, and you notice our breakpoint fires and we're sitting on this begin. Now as I just said, you can kind of visualize it as being your initialization sections are behind this begin statement. So rather than hitting F8 at this point and stepping over all of those initialization sections down to our application.initialize line, what I'm going to do instead is hit F7 to step into it with the debugger just as you'd step into a method. Yeah. So if I hit F7, the first one that's going to come up is not really the best example and I'll explain why in a second. But if I hit F7 you'll notice it's loaded up uh, the test framework.paz unit uh, that comes as part of the D unit framework uh, and it's taken us down to the initialization statement within that uh, within that unit 
Now, in this particular example, there's actually no code that's been generated uh, in our XE for this because of the conditional define. This call to init performance counter only takes place in the Linux version of DUnit. So, you know, it's a little hard to show debugging something when there's no source code emitted to it. So what I'm going to do is step past it and go to the next initialization section uh, inside my test, one of my uh, test units. Uh, in this case, we do have some source code, so we can actually debug. Um, so again, execution point is here. I can F8 to go down to the next line. Um, at this point, I can do all of the things that I would normally do in, a, in the debugger. I can step into, I can set watches, I can uh, look at my uh, call stack, you know, I can do um, evaluate and modify. I can, you know, I can use the debugger to, uh, to uh, explore the source code as it's executing. Um, when I've finished doing that, if I F8 down to the end, when I hit F8 at this point, um, if there is another initialization section, it'll take me to that, and in this case there is. So it's taken me to the next initialization section, and again, I can continue to debug um, debug those lines. Um, notice it's, uh, it's basically taking me to every initialization section. So it, it, one benefit is that you can actually discover all of the initialization code that's running. Uh, the other benefit that it gives you is that it actually lets you discover the order that they're running in because in anything beyond a fairly simple uh, project that can be tricky to uh, to work out um, manually so uh, let the let the debugger show it to you I th from memory this is actually the last um, initialization section in this so when I F8 at this point yes it's uh, now essentially finished all of the initialization sections that were in our um, metaphor stacked up behind this begin and it's taken us down to the first line of the project at this point I can you know, debug I'll hit F9 now uh, to actually run my uh, my dunit test framework um, if I close that now um, my final breakpoint has fired and as you've probably figured out by now um, this gives me an opportunity to walk through all of the finalization sections in my project um, just as before, if I hit F7 on this line, I'll walk into the first finalization section that's going to execute. Um, again, I can F7, I can F8, do all of the normal debuggy type stuff. Um, in this case, from memory, there's only the one finalization section in my project. Um, but if there were subsequent ones, again, just like with the initialization sections, when I F8 all the way down to the end, uh, and do it again, it'll step me through to the next finalization section. But in this case, um, when I walk off this end, essentially it's the last finalization section, I'm walking off the end of my uh, project source, and that's the end of my uh, my application. And you notice that's exactly what happens, the debugging uh, session ends. This was actually um, a lot easier and a lot quicker than uh, typing up the blog posts that I uh, normally do so I may actually start doing this instead in future um, it may help me work through my backlog of uh, blog topics that uh, I just can't face because I know they're going to take too long to write um, so uh, if this works then I'll probably start doing more of them uh, thanks for listening um, again this is Malcolm Groves uh, I hope this was useful